Step one, add 500 milliliters blue liquid. 500 milliliters blue liquid. Here we go, 500 milliliters. And 500 milliliters. Whoa, does that mean that 500 milliliters in the bowl is the same thing as 500 milliliters in the measuring cup? 500 milliliters. 500 milliliters, they look different. Oh, hi, I'm Neil from Hand to Mine. And this is the second day of the eighth week for our third grade Teach at Home series. And I was just working on some volumes. I was measuring 500 milliliters of blue liquid. And that's kind of what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about volumes and how you can measure liquids. Now you don't have to just measure liquids, you can measure solids, you can even measure air. But today, mostly what we're going to be doing is measuring liquids, maybe a little, some other stuff too. So if you're ready, let's get started. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about volume and capacity. And we're going to be building our understanding of the two, and especially our understanding of volume. So volume is the amount of space that is occupied or taken up by a liquid, a solid, or a gas, and it can be. It can also be and a gas. For instance, a box full of sand could have sand most of the way up, but then air the rest of the way, or taking up the rest of the box. And so we can say that the volume of the box is taken up by both sand and air, right? So another example of volume is this bucket. It contains a volume of two liters of water, meaning the amount of water that is in this bucket is two liters. You could take this water and pour it into a totally different shaped bucket, and it would still have two liters. You could pour it into any vessel that can hold two liters, and you would still always have the same volume of water. It would be two liters. So no matter what shape this water it is in, it will still always be the same volume of two liters. Another word that is important to know is capacity. And the capacity is the maximum amount of volume that a particular container can hold. So for example, this beaker has a volume of 15 milliliters, but that's not its capacity. This beaker can hold up to 50 milliliters. So therefore, it has a capacity of 50 milliliters. So it's very important to understand the difference between volume and capacity. If something is all the way full, then its volume is the same as its capacity. But if it's not all the way full, then the volume is going to be less than the capacity, as in this case, where the volume is 15 milliliters, but the capacity is 50 milliliters. So, in the U.S., where I assume a lot of us are taking this lesson, we typically measure volume in cups, which can be, we use the symbol C to show us that we're talking about cups. We also measure it in fluid ounces, so we do this symbol for fluid ounces, or sometimes we do gallons, and therefore we do this symbol GA. For example, this measuring cup contains a volume of two cups of liquid. Here we have two cups, and I will also say, since the two cup mark is the top of the cup, this measuring cup also has a capacity of two cups. Now that could be confusing because, yes, there's room on top of it, but let's say it has a measuring capacity of two cups, meaning that's the most we can measure in this measuring cup, is two cups. However, most other places in the world measure volume in liters, or milliliters. And this is also how us scientists like to measure volume. We use milliliters or liters. And for example, this measuring cup contains a volume now of 500 milliliters, which we can see right here, 500 milliliters. Just so we know, there are conversions that we can make. One milliliter is teeny. One liter is pretty big. 
So within one liter, we have a total of 1,000 milliliters. So here's a measuring cup that shows you that on one side, it says that this is 1,000 milliliters, and on the other side, it says it's one liter. And they're both the exact same thing. So we know that if we see one liter versus one milliliter, well, one milliliter has to be a lot smaller than one liter because 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. And that's going to be helpful later on as we go over some examples. So now, if you're given a measuring cup with a certain amount of liquid, I want you to tell me what is the volume that is in that measuring cup. So if we look at this one, we see that the liquid goes up to the 300 milliliter mark. So therefore, this measuring cup has 300 milliliters of liquid. What about this one? What is the volume in this measuring cup? How much, what is the volume in liquid we see? Well, same thing. We see that the volume is at the 100 milliliter mark. So therefore, there has to be 100 milliliters of liquid in the measuring cup. How about this one? Now, we're not at 100, 200, or 300, but we're in between. Now, we see it at 250 milliliters. Therefore, this measuring cup has 250 milliliters of liquid. How high does the measuring cup need to be filled to contain 400 milliliters? So if we were to look at this measuring cup, where would we see the liquid go up to in order to have 400 milliliters of liquid in it? Well, we see the 400 mark right there where the arrow is pointing. So therefore, we need to fill it up to that mark. That would be 400 milliliters. What about 150? Where would 150 be? I want to see what a volume of 150 milliliters looks like. Well, there's the 150 milliliter mark. So if we fill it up to that mark, then we have exactly 150 milliliters. Wonderful. So now I'm going to challenge your knowledge. I want to see how well you understand your volumes. So which volume seems more likely for the following picture? And I'm going to give you a hint. One liter is about the volume of a large water bottle. Some water bottles can be smaller, some can be bigger, but when you want to get a nice sized water bottle for a good long hike, you get one that's usually about one liter, uh, that has about one liter of volume. So we look at this paint can. Do we think it has two liters or 200 liters? Now remember, one liter is about the size of a water bottle. So do you think you could fit two large water bottles in that paint can or 200 large water bottles in that paint can? Well, that'd have to be a really big paint can to fit 200, right? So it's probably two liters. Let's try another one. Now we have a bathtub. We have a full-size bathtub. Does this look like two liters or 200 liters? And we can think of it again in terms of water bottles. Do you think that this has two large water bottles worth of water in it, or maybe 200 water bottles. I would, I would bet it's more like 200 or 200 liters of volume. Okay, now we have something really big. This is a hot air balloon, and if you've ever seen somebody in a hot air balloon, a full-size person or four full-size people can fit in this little container. So this has to be huge. So do we think that this contains 100 liters of air or 100,000 liters of air? 100 liters of air is a lot, especially if you think of water bottles, but it's not big enough to fill this. It's probably more like 100,000 liters. Here's a tough one, but I think you can do this. We're looking at this glass of water. Do we think the volume of the glass of water is 500 milliliters or 500 liters? Hmm. Let's think about this. 500 liters would be 500 bottles of water. And if we remember earlier, how many milliliters are in one liter? I told you this would come back. How many milliliters? There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. 
So how many liters is 500 milliliters? Well, 500 is half of 1,000. So 500 milliliters is half of one liter. So does this look like half of one liter or half of one large water bottle or 500 large water bottles? Well, if we use our judgment, it's pretty easy to tell that it would be half of a water bottle or 500 milliliters. And that's our lesson on volume. Thanks so much for following along. And tomorrow, we're going to get into weight. So I can't wait to see you then. And for more resources, please visit handtomindathome.com. Have a good one.